back to a brand new video. This video is a little bit overdue. I was planning on doing this uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I was caught up in a lot of other uh, filming that I had to, that was still pending and pending editing, but I'm filming this now. And as you know, uh, I have two Chanel 19 bags in my collection. This is the one that I fell for after hating the 19 for so long. I really hated the bag when it came out and I discussed it when I did the review of this one. But now that I have the black one and also in a different leather, uh, some of you were interested in knowing uh, what I think of the bag now. So right off the bat, this is something that I purchased last year and I used it a lot in the spring summer and that's when I learned how much I really love the style. Uh, to use and the white I have in the what we call the small size But in Chanel terminology, there is no small. This is the medium. Okay, so basically the smallest 19 bag they have um, Aside from the wallet on chain, which is a wallet on chain So I'll put this aside for now and then I wanted a black one after I after I really love that one I wanted a black one and I took advantage of the supply uh, in stores when I visited Paris in November of 2021 uh, and you know because getting a black especially in the small size again this is the small size um, they call it the medium so the smallest bag getting a black is very difficult because a lot of people are waiting for it um, so it's, it's a bit competitive uh, to get it but when I was in Paris uh, I was there when the cruise collection had launched and usually when a collection launches is when they have stock of a lot of things not just the seasonal stuff in that collection i took advantage of the fact that i was there and they had lots of bags that i could purchase so i was able to get this and at the time they also had the reverse as well so you see how this is the classic combination where the gold is on the buckle and then you have the gold top handle so the reverse hardware was also really nice that had the silver in the place of where the gold is and wherever you see silver or ruthenium you'll have gold so that was a reverse hardware that was a really nice one too so um the difference with this one versus my white one this is in lambskin they stopped making the chanel 19 in goat skin and it's uh you know they're probably not going to bring it back in goat skin i really do like the goat skin because it's a thicker leather as compared to well what I find as compared to the lambskin. So um, they're both smooth leathers, but anyway, I took advantage of it. It wasn't, I was hoping to find the goatskin. I found the goatskin version in the size larger than this. They actually had two. Uh, and then there was a woman in the store who was also a customer who was wearing her medium goatskin. And, um, you know, so I saw it on her in the, in the larger size. I was kind of thinking of getting the larger size, but I said, no, I'd, I'd rather have this size um, because it's great for every day. So I took advantage of the fact that I was able to get it there because of supply. Um, if I found it here, I'd find it here, but the price I paid was pretty much the same as here. Um, I don't think the price of these has gone up too much in the last increase. Uh, it's not classic flat money, but uh, it is it is up there. But um, it didn't go up as much as I thought it did, so which is still good. So since I purchased it, first in November, it went into my rotation right away and I usually switch out of bags uh, you know I like to do that right um, I switch out of bags but this I just didn't switch out of so what like you know those days where like because it was already packed and ready to go easy to grab by the top handle I know there's a lot of reviews of this on YouTube but I thought I'd just share my thoughts as well um, I was too lazy to change out of it. I was like, you know what, it works. Um, and especially given the season. So if you are from the GTA, from Toronto, um, you know that the weather here is not hunky-dory all year round. <laughs> uh, especially if you live in other cities, like if you live in New York City, similar weather, maybe not as cold and frigid as it can get here um if you kind of are in the midwest you guys know what i mean like we don't we have seasons we have four seasons but spring like we're filming right now in april okay so i've had this for okay so 
December, so November I bought it, so December, January, February, March, April. So I've been using this in my rotation pretty much all the time for five months. That's a really long time, okay? And uh, you guys know spring is hit or miss, like you'll have rain and it's cold, it's windy, it's not like California, right? Um, and this has been amazing because I wear like my winter parka with cold, right? Like um, I'm wearing that and I had no hesitation wearing this bag crossbody over that because you know you think about color transfer and all that right like i don't really wear a lot of my light colored handbags in the winter time because i'm wearing usually a dark colored coat um it's kind of gross and like the the weather is kind of muggy it's there's precipitation uh if there's snow there's salt everywhere there's slush everywhere it, it gets gross okay and you know, you don't want to have your delicate, nice handbags, regardless of if it's lambskin or caviar or calfskin, and they're a lighter color. Like, you're just worried about them getting damaged. And I really wasn't hesitant with this one. Um, I wore it over my parka. You know, there's zippers and stuff like that. There's rough edges that this can rub against. I really had no issues. And I'm very OCD with um, my handbags. I, a lot less now since after... COVID started because I realized that these are not precious, life is precious, and uh, you know, you know, it's not that I'm battering these around, but I'm not as, I don't baby them as much, and I'm, and I'm more open to using, really using the bag, okay? So it's been such an easy to use bag. Um, you know, lambskin was not my ideal leather because I wanted the goat skin, but I've actually been quite surprised. The lambskin versus the goat skin. Goat skin, well, I mean, it's kind of, it sucks that I have a different color, right? It would be nice if it was in the same color, but then I wouldn't have two of the same colored bags, right? I don't know if you can tell, but the goat skin, if you look at it in the black, actually looks shinier than the lambskin. The lambskin looks a little bit more matte, but the grain is definitely finer. Um, this lambskin is not like the lambskin you will see on classic flaps um, or like the trendy CC. It feels a little bit more treated. Um, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's thicker. But um, definitely doesn't seem to be as delicate as a lambskin handbag. And, and, and leathers can vary season to season, of course, because it is a natural hide, right? Like it's a natural material, so there's going to be variance season to season, of course, animal to animal. Um, kind of grosses me out when I think about it. Anyway, we will not talk about that, but anyway, um, so this, the, the structure, like the, the, the composition of the bag you guys all, are, the composition of the bag you guys are all familiar with. Uh, if you haven't watched my other video, we'll do a little bit of a what's in my bag, but it's got, it's a single flap, okay? It's got a turn lock at the front. You have a flap. It, this is like what I really like about it is that when you open it, it's wide open and you can get like when you're wearing a crossbody, it's so easy to get into versus you know how some handbags like the flap only opens about here and then you're kind of like getting into this is just very easy, right? Like very, very easy. Um, the back, you have a back pocket here and then there's a magnetic closure, which I really, really like. And it just closes up. You have this top chain handle, and then of course you have a long strap. Now, this size isn't for everyone, uh, and I realize this because I have a friend who really likes the 19, but for her um, height, this chain is way too long on her, and um, she would buy it if the chain was longer. Sorry, the, it, she would buy it if the chain was shorter. Unfortunately, you cannot adjust the chains on these. It is what it is. There's no way you can do that because of where the attachments are, right? Like, you can't loop it. You can't, I mean, maybe you could bring it. Let's try this and see. But then it would just make it look weird. Like, you, no, you wouldn't do that, right? I'm hoping, and you never know, because if you recall with the Coco handle, there used to be a mini size, and then they came out with this tiny, like this extra mini size, okay? Um, and I never thought that they'd do that, but you never know, maybe with this, right? For that, you know, like a, there's a lot of petite girls out there, and uh, maybe they'll come out with a smaller version with like a lighter chain that's um, shorter. So 
that could be in the works. You never know. If you if you imagine it and and you're waiting for something like that and this isn't 100% for you, then perhaps the brand's already working on creating a size for that. I don't I don't know that. I'm just predicting because I've seen that happen. Like if they did it for the cocoa handle, although that strap is longer than the the old mini or the small what they call now, but they still created a smaller size. So you never know. They might do that with the 19. You never know. Let's do a quick uh, pros and cons of the bag uh, before I get into what's in the bag because I want to show you some things of how I help to preserve the structure as this is a very um, pillowy type of bag. Okay, so if when I started to really like this bag is when I stopped thinking of it as being a structured bag. If you start to understand that this is not a structured bag and it's more of a relaxed bag, then you'll really uh, learn to appreciate it. Um, it's not a, I mean, it's deemed a classic, but the thing is, it's not, um, it definitely isn't like your classic looking bag. And if you're willing to accept that, and it's, it's an exaggerated classic flap meets boy bag. And, um, it's the last design by Karl Lagerfeld and, you know, it is special in its own right. So it's a very different aesthetic. Uh, for me personally, I really love structured handbags, and it was a little bit of a of a learning curve <laughs> to uh, accept a more relaxed, smushy type of bag. But to be honest, the reason why I love this bag so much is because I love how it feels when I use it, uh, the ease of use of it over how it looks. And of course, I've learned to love how it looks. But, um, you know, at the beginning, I was just like, what is this? Like, this is so, like, this is so, like, I thought it was grotesque. I thought it was so but ugly that I, <laughs> I didn't like it. But for the reasons I've stated, this is, you know, why I like it. But anyway, the cons with this bag is the strap is not adjustable, as I've mentioned before. The strap can be a little bit heavy. I know some people complain about this bit here. This leather bit is supposed to make it comfortable on the shoulder and some people say that you know when they wear the bag you know crossbody that this uh will then you know move to the back it doesn't stay on the shoulder i haven't really faced any issues with that i think because i'm wearing a coat and that i'm padded versus if well with any chain strap if you're wearing like a thin t-shirt or something or you know you're wearing a tank it's going to be uncomfortable right but um over clothing and over like you know a, a thick coat i don't have an issue with it um another thing is like i always love when this you know stays at the front but unfortunately it does make its way to the back just just how it is i don't know why uh but that's what it does if you put it down on a table there is a tendency um, not when it's full, but it can, if you, you know, bring the strap to the front and you bring this to the front, then there's more weight at the front of the bag where it can topple over. Uh, but you know, I've learned to just put the strap behind and it's good. Um, there, you know, these are made with smooth leathers or tweeds and, and tweeds I haven't experimented with, but it is nice to have this in a tweed as well. You can have some fun with that. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, Smooth leathers are going to scratch, whether it's goat skin or lamb skin. Um, I mean, I do have the goat skin and the white, and I find that the goat skin is thicker, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to scratch. It will scratch. It will, I mean, even caviar leather, if you rub it the wrong way, you'll scuff off the pebbles. This cannot be made in caviar leather because then it won't, it, it just wouldn't, you know, fold. It wouldn't be the soft, smushy bag that it is. Um, so... It will scratch. Uh, I have noticed some scratches, just very fine. Like, I mean, it hasn't been too bad, to be honest, until I discovered something just recently, which I'm kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe this, I have it. But prior to me filming this video, maybe about a month ago, I was like, I'm good. Like, this bag is amazing. I mean, the first time I remember, like I put my hand through it and then my ring kind of, you know, made its mark there, but just a little scuff. And the inside of the flap, I don't really see anything. Like, it could be very minor, but because it's so just, I guess like the texture of the leather kind of disguises any scratches. Um, so I don't really have an issue with that. And, and you know, like I said, regardless of if it's goat skin or lambskin, it, any smooth leather is going to scratch, okay? 
Um, it is not very heavy in my opinion. Uh, some people say that it can be just because of the chain and all, but I actually find it to be really lightweight because um, it does have the textile interior. It's not a full leather bag on the inside, so some people don't like that because they are paying such a high price point and it's not fully leather on the inside. They may do that at one point, I, I don't know, but it's always had that textile interior. Um, the pros of the bag are, uh, it's a single flap. The turn lock, it's easy to get into and out of, okay? The flap opens just like that so you're not fidgeting inside. You have a top handle to carry it around. You have a long enough shoulder strap, so my height, I'm five foot six, and this is great crossbody on me. The back pocket is the best feature that I have on here because I stick in random things, so. I have my value ticket in here. Sometimes I do put my phone in here, but I just kind of like put it in like this. I can put it in like this too, I have, but I just put it in like this. So it's easy to get and it's very convenient, right, when you're running out the door. So there's that. Um, so many pros with this bag. It It's just so easy to reach for. Um, it's easy to put stuff inside, like I'm not playing Tetris as much with it as I do with more structured bags. Um, it's wonderful. So at the top here, I've got sunglasses. Like, it just it's just very accommodating, okay? I have a pack of gum. I actually have a bag organizer in here and I'll show you. I have a pack of gum. I have a uh, random receipt from Itali. I have my key holder. And, oh, should I just get closer? Okay, I have card holder. I have my iPhone charger. I have a Bastia coin purse. I have a silk mask. And it's more of a formality, but like it, we know that these don't offer any protection. We need N95s. <laughs> I have a foldable comb that I got from a flight. Um, I have a car key. I have a lip liner. I have some acupuncture needles, which is really <laughs> random. I have a lipstick. I have a key. Well, I'll go over this after. I have some random jewelry and I have an elastic band I have my <laughs> plastic pouch which I put money and everybody asks me about this this is if you guys are from Ontario we have a store called dynamite it's a Canadian store I don't know if you can tell can you see dynamite okay so um, when I had my iPhone 6 many moons ago I bought a case and it was you know packaged in this and it's like a ziploc pouch and it fits money perfectly and it's so compact and i just put it in my bag so it's good i've tried to find this on amazon and i can't find one i have another receipt and two more receipts okay so you have a back pocket in here. So let's just take out the base uh, bag organizer. So Zumani was generous enough to give me oh boy, um, a bag organizer. Oh, I have a little plastic pouch with insurance slips for the car. But you've seen these before. I have one in my white 19, and this is uh, the red to match the red interior of the bag here, okay? Um, and this has been great because it prevents the walls of the bag from collapsing, right? So like, I mean, you can wear the 19 without anything in it and it will be more smushy. Um, but this helps with storage and you also get extra added organization. So this I've had, I, I love it for both bags and I store bags with these organizers inside. So it's a bag shaper plus organizer. Um, they give you a little extra little pouch and I just put a, like a key fob in here so that I put in there so this is what I have in the in the bag and at the bottom so M Boutique Australia I've mentioned them before they make these really nice uh, 
base shapers for bags. So I originally, uh, before I started YouTube, I found their store on Etsy. I do, I think they have a, a website now, so I'll insert details below. Also for Zumani as well, I'll insert details. Um, so originally I bought the shaper for the wallet on chain, which some of you really, really enjoy. And then I bought uh, a base shaper for my boy bag to prevent it from sandwiching. And when I started YouTube, I mentioned them in a video and then they reached out and then said, would you like to do a giveaway as well? So they are going to be teaming up. I'll, just, I'll put in the details of the giveaway in the description box below. So you can win a base shaper for one of your handbags. So if they don't have the model on the site, you can measure the base for them and they can make a shaper for you. But I have the shaper from my white 19. So I was using this. So this goes in my white bag, but they sent me a new one in red to go in here. So I'll just show you without the base shaper and without anything in it, this is what the bag does. Okay. Now you may not have an issue with it. Okay. I don't like the pancake look of 19. I like it to stay kind of like a nice little, you know, cube-like pillow, okay? I don't want it to do this. I don't. I don't want it to do this at all. But some people like that. That saggy, the saggy diaper look. I don't like it, okay? But we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna put in the base shaper. So they come like this. And I've had base shapers made for other bags as well. So it's basically like a stiff sort of board and they've got like a vinyl around it. And then you have folded edges so you fold up the edges okay and this is made to the base of the bag okay so I have the red textile interior uh, for those of you who are wondering this bag in particular is made in Italy okay if it matters so this is a nice excuse for me to clean out my bag Base shaper goes in to the bag, so it fits nicely inside. You can see there, okay? So it fits to the bag. Now what that helps to do is it prevents the base from getting, like doing that pancake, okay? So if you have a boy bag, because that can that's subject to pancake bag too, or something like this, get yourself a base shaper, okay? And um, so, you know, great, right? You have your internal pocket, you can put stuff inside for safekeeping. Mine is the uh, ones that have come with that um, cereal plaque instead of the sticker. And and there you have it, right? Like you can you can definitely get by with just that. It's perfect. For added shape I like to put in the bag organizer as well okay this is totally worth getting it fits right inside and it just gives the bag extra organization it prevents the interior of the bag from getting dirty and you know gives it a little bit more structure so it doesn't collapse in on itself okay so that's been great um, now the main differences I found with the goat skin versus the lamb skin is that even on new bags, especially in this size, I have found that when you when you lift at the top handle, see how this stays relatively straight. This one, even new in boutique, it has it's, it tends to have a little bit of a divot there just from the leather being soft. And when my bag is really full, it will sort of do that a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. So then I just kind of encourage it to be like that. Now that doesn't mean that won't happen to goat skin because I have seen, again, like when I was in Paris and I was in the shop, there was a, a woman there who had a medium size goat skin bag in black, uh, medium meaning the size, this is the medium, but I mean the size larger than this. And she was carrying it and hers was like smushed and it caved. So 
it's inevitable with this bag it's just it may not take as long for it to do it with the goat skin than it does with the lamb skin now we don't really have a choice anymore because the lamb skin that's what they make it now right that doesn't mean that they won't introduce goat skin again but I've been told that they don't see anything in goat skin in the next few collections so but the back pocket is definitely a pro so that's amazing to have that there to stick things inside so wear and tear has not been too bad I've been very impressed because I've used this bag every day I've seldom changed out of it only changed out of it when going to an event or going out for dinner and then maybe switched into like a another bag but for my daily use I've been using this on the daily so I've been pleasant, pleasantly surprised as, as how much I've used this now I did notice some rubbing on the corner so one day I was leaving work and it was you know how the days are longer now so like you know when you're in the evening like it's still bright out and my my bag was sitting on the passenger seat and there's daylight coming in and I noticed something and I'm like oh my god so I have noticed some rubbing on the corners um, it may be difficult to tell it's really hard to tell on camera but can you see there and a little bit up here as well I don't know if you can tell but just a little bit of rubbing um, where the black has faded it's really not bad really isn't bad like I really shouldn't be complaining but a little bit of rubbing and um, I'm trying to figure out why it rubbed here and I think either it was when I was driving and I had to break or something and I remember my bag was on the back seat and it flew into where like the your feet go onto the mat below and I heard like oh my gosh um, I looked at the bag I dusted it off it was fine so it did fall I think there must have been like some rubbing there um, or what I do is I have a tote I have the Dovi tote and for work so I put all my stuff in there and then I put this in there so it could be me putting it into another bag with other things maybe that rubbed against it I mean, I haven't babied this bag, but I haven't necessarily thrown it around either, aside from when I braked and then the bag flew. That wasn't my fault, that just happened because of law of inertia. But I mean I'm I'm very careful. Like I, I don't like I, I really don't abuse the bag. I, I used it but I didn't abuse it. Um and that's that's what I could see. And and seeing as I've been using it pretty much daily for the last five months, I'm not surprised. I'm just going to take you through some close-ups of the bag so you can get a better idea of the wear and tear. So here is the bag, you know, yeah, I've got some foundation marks on it, but you can see there's like a faint scratch at the front, but it is disguised because the um, lambskin has a bit of a texture to it, so it does uh, ref refract the light differently, so you don't notice it as much. But I'm trying to show you... A bit of the rubbing at the edges especially the corners and that happens with caviar classic flaps as well over time um, but here at the top maybe you can see right there where my thumb is at that edge there's a bit of a, a, a scuff there and here this in particular the flap that's what I'm very puzzled about as to how that got um, like smudged or or smooth you can see at the bottom corner as well a little bit um it, it's, it's as though it's like some of the pigment has faded but it's not bad it's just i just notice it um you know if i look at it in you know daylight but it really doesn't look bad at all the bottom is fine considering like there's no feet on the bottom like it looks pretty good and same on this side i think that's a foundation mark as well just like for me touching the bag but you can see like there's a little bit of rubbing or fading at the edges if you look really closely the hardware is quite good i know the turn lock it looks like the gold has rubbed off but actually that's how it's meant to be um, if you look at the rest of the hardware uh, especially the chain it does have that antique aged finish so that's not it being rubbed um, if you look at like the the chain links i'm going to just get to that right now the chain links you can see right like it's kind of like some of the gold it's not rubbed off that's just how it looks okay so that's not 
wear and tear. That's how it's supposed to be. So I just thought I'd show you that. And then maybe you can see a little bit of the scratch at the top of the bag. Uh, and the back looks good too, considering it's like against the body and it's rubbing against the body. So, um, so far, so good. Like there's really nothing I could really complain about, but that's the only wear and tear I've noticed. And that's for me, like using the bag consistently uh, for five months. So I think I can give you a pretty good idea as to what to expect. That's something to note. Now, Chanel does have a edge painting service that you pay for. Uh, I was told this when I went to take my wallet on chain for repair, but then they ended up replacing that for other reasons. But um, you had to pay for it. But I'm going to take it into Chanel. I'm going to ask them if there is something that can be done because I'd rather if I'm going to have it touched up, I'd rather have it done by Chanel. Uh, if not, I am looking into getting a product from Lux Du Jour. Lux Du Jour is a, um, a business based out of Calgary, Alberta in Canada and they sell pre-owned luxury items uh, including handbags and they have some great deals. Sometimes I post some of the stuff that they have. I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, that's a really good deal for XYZ bag. Um, and they also have a spa as well. So I have heard of some people using their spa service. Like when I'm on the Facebook group, some people talk about it, like if you're in Canada, because in the US there's, I think, um, leather surgeons that people go to. But if you're in Canada, you're a little bit nervous about sending something over the border. So um, we do have a spa. They do have a spa service here as well, where people restore their handbags and they've had good feedback. So there's this pen. Um, that you can use. So I'm going to look into getting that and I can come back and show you what I think. I'm going to talk to Chanel first. I'm going to see what they say. It really isn't bad. Like I, you can't really notice it, but it kind of bugs me when I see it in direct sunlight and I notice that a little bit of fading here and a little bit of fading here. Uh, but I'm not too bothered by it because it's not like I'm selling this handbag. It's not like I'm trying to preserve it and keep it absolutely perfect to sell. No, I like I mean, I'm I'm definitely using this bag. It's very easy. I can see why a lot of parents with young children like this bag because you can just put it on crossbody, you know, um it easily fits a lot of things inside and you can be out and doing your own thing. Um so and weather-wise too, like despite it being lambskin, if there's a bit of rain, a bit of snow, um I haven't been I haven't had, any issues with this but yes if it's a downpour obviously I'm gonna be like protecting it but if there's a sprinkling of a sprinkling <laughs> only a sprinkling of precipitation I'm not having a heart attack okay so uh, highly recommend uh, as your first bag so somebody asked me would you recommend this versus a trendy CC as my first bag it really depends is, is this gonna stay your only bag <laughs> Chances are no, because once you get hit by the luxury bug, you're going to want other luxury styles, which is totally okay. But um, I would say, yeah, as a first bag, because if you're going to use this a lot, like it's well worth your money, you'll get a lot more cost per wear. The only thing is that you might struggle transitioning this from day to night if you want to look for an evening bag. Um, and so for that reason, maybe not. But actually, I mean, I've taken this out for the evening. I haven't had any issues like gone out to dinner and stuff like nowhere some nowhere any not anywhere formal but just like um just just casual right like going out and it's been fine anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this review and that you found it helpful check the description box down below for giveaway instructions for the base shaper that you can win from M Boutique Australia. I do have coupon codes for uh, M Boutique Australia so you can get some money off of your base shaper. I also have a coupon code for Zumani Bag Organizers. I always have those coupon codes in the description boxes of all my videos. I don't earn a commission from these coupon codes. It's not an affiliate. It's just so that you can save some money. Um, Zumani did also send me a bag organizer for my Dior book tote and when I go over that, I will show you guys that as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.